Here's your heads up. Heads up to this longer podcast. I want you to be perfect. You want yourself to be perfect. No, I don't. I re- I, the, the last thing I want is for you to be perfect. I know you probably do, but it's the last thing I want is for you to be perfect. What I do want is... Oh, you're going to have to have a listen aren't you, after this. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Hey, my friends, we're back. Another episode of the Personal Development Unplugged podcast. And this is something that I think will resonate to certainly some of you. I hope it resonates with most of you, especially you, because there are times in our life, everyone, I think everyone, a big generalization, but everyone seems to have this to a greater or lesser extent. And that's the need to be perfect. Some people have to be perfect all the time. And that can be a real bummer because, well, I'll explain the because in a minute, but I want, because I want you to think about this, but just see if this resonates with you because this is at the one end of the spectrum. And this is somebody I know really well. It's not me, but it's someone I know really well. And he had to be perfect. Had to be perfect all the time. If his day wasn't perfect, his day was ruined. And I mean ruined. Because I'd see him go out to work early in the morning. Got a really good job. He's managing, sorting out problems, looking after a lot of people. High flying, high flying. And he would go in there really early and I'd say to him, what's on your schedule today? And he's got, well, I've got this meeting, that meeting, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Really hitting some marks, Dad. But that's, and he said, I've got to do this and that. And I've got all these things planned out because I've got my my morning routine. I'm going to see people. I've, I've got everything mapped out. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And when I saw him in the evening, I said, how'd you get on? He goes, oh, it was a terrible day. Terrible day. The whole day got ruined. So well, what happened? I thought we had a lot of meetings. Oh, smash the meetings. We're outperforming everybody's expectations. But he said, you know what? I ate a crappy sandwich at lunchtime and that's my diet ruined and that's the whole day ruined. That one thing has ruined my day. I said, well, really? What can't be? He said, well, that is and I've got to start again and everything. I've just and it was just one little thing would, instead of being a, a high achiever, which he was, he was achieving more than most in his mind. It was a bad day and he hadn't achieved much at all. He didn't give himself credit for all the good things he's done. He just spotlighted that one tiny little thing that didn't go quite to plan. Now, if that resonates with you, you're on that one end of the spectrum and that's what we're going to do here today. But there's also times when, you know, we're generally okay, but we still need to be perfect in one particular thing. Now, here's the thing. Here's the big thing. If any of that resonates with you, and I'm sure it does in some way, shape or form, it does for me, because I don't want to be perfect all the time, but there are times when I really want to do things so perfectly, and I never will. And that's the thing. I've come, I'm at peace with that now. I'm at peace that there is no such thing as perfect because you can always do, well, do things just a little bit better, can't we? We've talked about, can I? Constant, never-ending improvement. Well, if you were perfect, you couldn't improve, could you? And there's always something we can improve because when we do something and we learn from something, guess what? We can Im- we've can we improved. So what was maybe perfect in that older use world was imperfect. So I think it's setting the right bar, the right target. But you see, the other thing is, and this is sometimes where I think we need a little bit more of a a help. I want to give you some how-tos here. I always like to give you how-tos. You know that. That's what this whole podcast is about. There are so many, as I say, so many great podcasts about that try to deconstruct what people are doing. And they do to an extent. They find out what they're doing, but they don't tell you how to do what they're doing try to find the mindset in you to create that. And this is where I hope this uh, podcast, the Unplugged podcast, 
is going to be that little bit different. Yeah, we'll crib off other people and we'll take their bits and make them better. That's what we're going to do. We'll always give credit. But anyway, going back to here, I've also recently had some clients um, that I've been using hypnosis and hypnotherapy and things like that with. As in another life, I do I do that work. A parallel life, as it were. And just of lately, I've had some people with having real problems in their life and things aren't going well. And they, it's not as if they think they're having having targets and not not meeting those targets they just don't feel good their days are generally down and they don't know why and when we've explored it and we've gone to the cause the root cause because there's only an effect remember we've gone beyond the effect back to the root cause we've found that they have been striving to be perfect because they just have to be perfect have to be perfect in everything they do because if they don't people will not love them. People will not approve of them. And obviously that love and approval comes from maybe, well, in they, these people's cases, uh, clients' cases, they were their family members. And they were, they then took that, that need for that love and approval into everything they did. So every family member, everything they did for their friends was had to be perfect. Because if it wasn't, they would never be accepted by those people. They would never receive the love or credit from those people. They'd never be seen to be who they want to be. And knowing that you can't be perfect, that's a bit of a downer really, isn't it, if you think about it? Because if you're spending your whole life needing to be perfect, because the only way you're going to be expect, accepted or loved is that need, and it's never going to happen. And that's why we did the therapy. Not that they needed therapizing. They just needed a tweak. They're not broken. They just needed a slight tweak in their belief system or and more importantly learning from what created it because it's that positive learning from that cause allows them to create a new way of being and so if that resonates with you maybe one-to-one -one is, is is the place to go certainly work on the things that we're going to do today in the hows the how-tos but if you need that little bit of help i really do suggest go one-to-one -one one-to-one -one with a therapist. Oh, I don't know where there is one, Cluffy. Well, there's one here. If you really want, want one and you want a good one, you can, ooh, you could uh, come and work online with me if you want to. But you can get, you, you'll find a way to get in touch with me if you want to. We'll just have a talk. Um, but there's plenty of people around. And I've even got notes on, on how to find a good therapist. If you go back through the the old catalogue or the past catalogue of episodes. There is one called uh, Finding What to Find About a Therapist or something like that. So I give you the ways that I would do it, knowing what I know now, how I would find the best therapist uh, to deal with stuff. But anyway, let's assume just for the moment, you don't need a therapist, but you're going to have a look at what's happening. So I wonder why. Why is this in your life? So one of the things we need to do, I think, first is this model of the world you have. You might want to just notice what belief you have about this. And when you get that feeling, it's that feeling where you, you haven't succeeded, you haven't been perfect. Notice where that feeling is in your body. This is part of the how-to, by the way. Just notice that feeling. We're not going to go deep into our past and things like that because we don't do that. Not here. But just... Notice that feeling you get when you've come home at the end of a day and things haven't been perfect. Notice that feeling. And as you notice that feeling, just ask yourself, what belief do I have that makes this feeling so? Strange sentence, powerful sentence. What belief do I have that makes this feeling so? Write it down. Put it on a little card, maybe. And then when you get that feeling, pull out the card and just ask yourself, what belief do I have that makes this feeling so? And you'll come up with a belief of something like, I'm going to guess, I don't want to put too much into your mind because I want your own belief, but it might be, you know, um, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not worthy. That's a real weird one, but so many people say worthy. Um, you know, maybe I'm stupid. I'm not going to say anymore. You'll find that belief. And when you find that belief, there's two things I want you to do. Even if you don't find the belief, it will come to you. But, you know, if you find that belief, I want you to think of times when you have actually been that belief. So if it was, I'm not worthy, 
or not good enough. Find times in your life when you have been worthy of something, when you have been good enough, when things were successful. It doesn't have to be the biggest event in your life. It could be a small thing, because I did it well. Yeah, I, I was good enough for that. You know, I was good enough, if need be, to open the front door and go to work. I was good enough to do, to help somebody. I just a good enough. That's all it is, good enough. Because that's all we really have to be, good enough, and then make it better. And you see, the more you do that, the more, or if you think of when things, the other thing to do is think of times when things weren't quite perfect, good enough as it were. And it was okay. It was okay. There was no no issue about it. It was okay. I cooked this meal. It could have been a little bit better, but it was gorgeous. So always something could be a bit better. We know that that's what we do with our life. If we're in this process of self-improvement, personal development, we're always looking to improve ourselves and do things better. But it was good. It was good. We enjoyed it. And I'm going to learn from that and make it better. But when you find these things, what we're doing, we're finding counterexamples. And when you find these counterexamples, maybe consciously you're going, well, I don't know really what, what, what's happening here. But what you're doing is you're loosening the model of your world, your world inside, the things that your unconscious mind has experienced and catal- catalogued and categorized as being the need to be perfect or not. And when you find out things were good enough, and it was okay. You didn't get down. It was okay. You enjoyed it. You've loosened that model. And when you loosen the model, it means now you can start working on what is the most appropriate level to work at. Because you see, here's the thing. First of all, notice what your intention is. Because the intention doesn't need to be, I need to be perfect. What's the intention for actually doing the work? So maybe it is, I want to run the most successful team at work. That's it. It hasn't got to be perfect because if it was perfect, you'd be delusionized, wouldn't you? As we know, there's nothing can be perfect, but we can always improve it. But if I'm running the best, because that's a great intention. Maybe my intention is just to serve clients so well, better than anybody else. That's pretty awesome. So you've got to start thinking of your intention because your intention is not to be perfect. In fact, it's good to leave. When I work with people, sometimes I say, you know, just leave a little imperfection just below the surface that no one can see because then we'll always know that things don't have to be perfect so look at your intention write it out if you notice the context i guess context of of what is causing that feeling that old feeling so the person i was talking about it was the part about his diet so what's the intention of the diet well, the intention is to eat healthily there, there, and realize sometimes we trip up, but it's how you get up from that trip. And once you've got that intention out of the way, we can give ourselves a parameter, a, a leeway, as it were. But anyway, when you get that intention, write it down again. Because when you write it down, you remember it. And when you've got that intention, you can now, we're going to use that intention a little bit later on in one of the visualization exercises. But the thing is, when you do this, one of the things you could do, knowing that intention and knowing now that things don't have to be perfect, you've got to change the level, bring the bar down a little bit. Because you see, this person who had to have this perfect day and was destroyed by, you know, eating a bag of crisps, which was crazy because they was in a multi-million pound company doing really good stuff and a bag of crisps cocked up the whole day. The simple thing we did when we were talking, we said, well, why don't we just lower the bar and make a perfect day at 90% of perfecticity? That's a special word. So, because most people, if you could go through your days and get 90% done at a 90% success rate, at a 90% perfecticity, you would be outperforming virtually everyone. And... I guarantee you, even if you said it 80%, you'd still be outperforming. But whatever you set between 80 and 90%, because of the type of person you are, you'll probably exceed that. Which means, so I said it, I'm going to split the difference. My sort of perfect day is 85%. Because I know I've got this fudge factor. Because some things may need to be, you know, just tweaked. I know that I'm going to hit 86 87, 
88% virtually every day, which means when I come home, I'm booming. I'm having the time of my life because I'm a success. Now, the thing is, you will have probably done more than you would have done in the past, but even if you didn't and you did this exactly the same amount, think of the difference in that feeling you have. One is I'm a success and one is I'm a failure. Well, I'll tell you what, which one I'd rather have, and I want you to just test it. Test the old feeling of, of being that failure, and then test the feeling when you've been a total success. Which one do you enjoy? In obvious, Paul. So what one would you use to, to make things even better, to keep that 1% improvement? Well, obviously, building on success, don't we? We can learn. We can still learn. This day was a success, and there's that little bit of tweaking I need to do. I'm learning for the things which didn't quite work out, but I'm learning from a better state. You see, because if I'm in a good state, I can look at stuff, and I'll just, just dissociate myself just a little bit, but I'm in a better state. And I'm going, ah, now I see what I did. I can change that for another time. But if I'm in that down failure state, I tell you what, looking at that and saying, I wonder what I can learn from this. Well, there's nothing to learn from this because it's just a failure. It's a no-brainer. Lower the bar, have success, and then look from that success and the things that you could tweak. But to, And to do that, how good will you feel, yourself, feel about yourself? Now, I said, you know, you've got to, in my notes here, and they're a little bit woo-woo-la-la, or in that way, you know, you've got to accept yourself, and you've got to love yourself. Now, ooh, Paul, love yourself? Yeah, you've got to love yourself. Because, you know, you're the only one who can really love yourself. You can take, you can be loved, but you're the only one who could really love yourself and know. So that's something you might have to work on. But I know when you come from this feeling of success, this feeling you'll get a sense of achievement, a feeling of comfort, a feeling of just be, you know, everything's okay. You'll be able to look at yourself and, f- and feel good about yourself. And that is, is in some ways just, you know, loving yourself and accepting yourself because you're accepting yourself that there's always something that you can improve upon, but you also know you're doing a good job. Nearly swore then. So how do we do this? There's another, let's, let's do a few hows. Let's do that taking that inventory. You know, where are you now? Because that's the other thing we do when, we're, when we think we have to be 100%. And we look at our life and our days from this feeling of failure. Everything is, well, it's just no point looking because I know they're all down. But if you're looking for this, from this dissociated place of, of feeling good about yourself, you can just say, well, what things have I achieved? Let's just make a note of them. The things that I've achieved, the things I've done good in my life, you know, the goals I've, I've surpassed, the things I've done for other people, made people happy. Now, what goals have I set and achieved? Maybe there's some goals I didn't quite achieve, but when I look back at it now, there was no way on earth I could have achieved it. Didn't have the, the, the information, the skills, the knowledge but I did a bloody good job getting with the resources I had to get where I was. You know, it's just taking an an inventory of what you, just where you are with with the positive things in life. And if you want to, you can then set your intention is, well, I now want to learn from those. Because if I learn from those, I can. And you go back to that first intention, maybe helping people, serving people, running the best team, becoming the best company, becoming the best you. Ooh, that's a big one, Paul. Yeah. Because if we don't have that intention of being the best us, who else is going to have it for us? And if you think about it, if you have an intention that's less than being the best you, will you ever achieve the best you? Not in a month of bloody Sundays. And I know that's, a, again, a flash of the bleeding obvious. But these obvious things do lay just below the surface of our conscious recognition. And so we want to bring them out and go, yeah, you know, you're right. Now, life's not too bad. There's some stuff that went on and, yeah, I should have done better, but I'm going to learn from it because I'm in this this place of, of self-improvement, personal development. And in fact, I'm part of this community, the unplugged community of making the world different. You are part of it, aren't you? Absolutely. So here's the thing. What's that, Paul? Well, how else do you do this? Well, I've, I've, I've loosened the model of my world, haven't I? Because I've found that belief and I've found counterexamples of that belief. I've also found things that I've done. I've taken that that inventory. I've lowered the bar a little bit to know that what is the, the right level, a really good level that's achievable and it's beatable. 
Because that's how you get personal best, by the way. Because if you think about it, a personal best is only a best at that particular time. You know you're going to exceed it. So that's what you aim for. And it's in your life. No one else is not comparing it to other people. We've talked about this before. When you compare their best to your average, well, and even sometimes we never do that, even our average. We, don't, we look at our worst of ours, our worst inside to the best of their outside. So that comparison is just always going to be doomed for failure. Doomed, doomed, I say doomed. But anyway, you compare yourself with you, what's happened in the past, how you moved forward, what have you achieved? Let's get that self-esteem because it is self-esteem and you're going to be in this world of self-improvement becoming the better you the best you you could be and then get better personal best you and then beat it and how are you going to do that well you have that intention and now i want you to start visualizing things but when you're going to visualize something don't start and go oh, okay i'm going to this meeting let me visualize the meeting going going ahead that's okay that's no, that's, well, it's not okay, is it, Cluffy? No. Because what I want you to do first is understand your intention. Restate it out loud if no one's listening. Who cares if they're listening? Because they, they don't know what you're doing anyway. So set your intention. Get in a good state. You know how to set your state. And if you don't, you go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. You join up there. And there's, I can't remember which number it was, but it's setting your state. About 86 point something rather. Lovely process of setting your state. And there's even one about finding your intention. Whoa, Paul, you've got them all covered, all bases covered. So you set your state, you set your intention. And then with that intention, you also start to think of your outcome first. And it's not just, I want a good meeting. What do I specifically want from, if it was a meeting, for example, what specifically do I want from that meeting? Or maybe it's an interview, or maybe it's meeting somebody, or whatever, you know what I mean. What do you specifically want for you? They're going to get the benefit. So if it's to serve, I want to serve the best I can and do it this way. So you now got the outcome. And knowing the outcome and knowing the state you've got, which is like a dissociated state to start off with, you can be dispassionate about it because you can be like a director. But you've got your intention. So your intention and outcome are now linked. Now visualize going through that event. And it doesn't have to be in real time because it could be a long time and you're visualizing forever. We don't want to waste time because you can visualize quite quickly you can like speed things up or or miss little chunks out your unconscious mind knows what's happening i mean your unconscious mind when i do work with people i can get them go through a whole year day by day practicing things for a whole year and they do it within 10 15 seconds you can do that you've all had dreams where you think things have gone on for ages and you've woken up and look at your watch or something and you go damn i need to swore again damn it's two minutes have gone yet it seemed like hours so start to just visualize going towards the outcome now because you know the outcome, you know the aim in mind and just look at it from above and notice all the things that you do to make sure you tweak it so it's right. And when you've got it right, actually go into you in that visualization, become the visualization, associate back into you, see what you will see through your own eyes, hear what you will hear through your own ears and feel the feelings of how you want to feel going through it. Because that is telling your unconscious mind, this is how, it's, how I want it to be. With the wonderful words, what are they? This or something better. And when you've got all of that, dissociate. Come back to you. See that memory over there and let it flow out in the future. Let it go. This or something better. Because then, why would you do that? Why would you dissociate? Because it was such a good feeling in that, that visualization. I want to be there. Yeah, you want to be there, but in real life. Because if you live in a visualization, because some people do, their unconscious mind thinks they've already got it. So why do anything about it? But when you pull away and you dissociate, your unconscious mind goes, ah, that's where we're heading. That's the feelings I'm going to look for. They're they're the feelings I'm going to create, the behaviors I'm going to use, the tone of voice, the smiles, the body language. I don't like body language. The physiology. This or something better. Oh, I can do it even better than this, can I? Absolutely, because nothing is perfect. We can always improve. That's your personal best. And I'm going to exceed a personal best. That's my target. And then, and I'm not going to go over over this this time, if you wanted to, you commit. And you commit and you use the five keys to success. Look those up. I've mentioned them so many times. If you don't know them, send me an email. Feedback at Personal Development Unplugged. 
and I'll tell you what they are, and they're going to be awesome. So that's what I'd like you to do. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great? So what have we done? First of all, we make sure that it's not a hugely emotional problem. It's something that's affecting your whole world forever. Oh, I'll tell you what. By the way, just recapping before we do that. The person who lowered the bar started to smash it. Just smash things out of the park. And it was a month ago. Because sometimes he would drift back. Drift back into this perfect world of nonsense. And the other day we were speaking. And he said, do you know what? I used to really worry about these particular meetings I was having. And then I realised, do you know what? They don't have to be perfect. I just need to get the things across the way I want to get them across. That's the only pressure I've got on myself. And I can do that sitting on me bum. But knowing that it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, it takes all the pressure off me. To, and he said the word, it takes all the pressure off me. And actually, it's better. It's coming out better than I ever imagined because I'm just relaxing into it. And because when I relax and I feel comfortable, I know my intention, I know my direction, I can access everything I want to say, all the information, and I can communicate it in a way that it, that people get it. He said, so I don't need to be perfect. I just need to be who I am. There you go. So what have we done? What are we saying? If this is really highly emotional to you, do seek one-to-one. One-to-one work with a coach, therapist. You know, I like hypnosis and time and, and NLP, timeline therapy. NLP and, and hypnosis just bl- blend together and get results really quickly. So don't worry about, oh, it's going to take me ages. People tell me it takes years. It doesn't. Two or three sessions should nail it, even for the biggest things. So don't worry about that. But in the meantime, and if it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's a, a, a part of your life, what are you going to do? You're going to just know that if nothing has to be perfect. What have I done good in my life? What what have I done which has been good enough? And what belief do I have about that feeling that I can find counterexamples of? Because when I find those counterexamples, what have I done? I've loosened the model of my world, which allows me to lower the bar. And when I lower the bar to say 85, 90%, I'm going to smash, smash things out of the park. And when I do that, I'm also going to take an inventory of all the things I've achieved that have been good enough. I'm better. So I'm now setting my personal best, seeing what they are. And then I'm going to visualize, visualize by setting my intention. Because we've, that's the other thing. We've, we've also found our intention for, for wanting to be perfect. And then we visualize from us dissociating, seeing it exactly the way we want it. Then associating, going into that, that visualization, into that memory of the future. See what it will be like. Feel, hear what it will be like. Feel it. Make sure it's just the way you want it. And then dissociate. Come back out. And saying those wonderful words we always say this or something better and your unconscious mind goes i'm up for this i'm up for the challenge to beat your personal best because that's what best friends do you encourage your best friend your un- your best friend encourages you and my notes i'm just noticing one of my notes is notes is <laughs> one of my side notes is how how do i really want you to feel well, I, have i have i done this i want you to as you just listening to this i hope i've i've set this feeling is achievable that everything is achievable. Everything that you set your mind to is achievable. All you have to do is set that intention, get the feelings, and do the visualization, get the right belief sets, and things like that. And that's important to me. Important to me that you know then this is going to be a wonderful stretch. Think of those wonderful stretches in yoga when you just breathe out and you relax and the stretch goes, ah, this is gorgeous. I'd love to know, as always, let me know if this resonated with you at all. If it didn't, I'm sorry, and I hope I haven't wasted your time. Certainly you can pass this on to somebody else. Because, but I do think we all have this in some form or other, or some measure in our life, different contexts. So I'm, I'm sure there's a little gem in here, or more than one. I hope there is. That's my intention, that maybe I won't hit the mark 100%, because nothing is perfect. But I'm going to leave some a trail of breadcrumb gems for you to pick up and put together and then make better. And share. Share with your best friend. Share with me your feedback. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. That's my email address. It's private. Only comes to me. And you'll get a personal answer from me. That's it. No one else gets it. No one else reads it. No one else replies. Just little old Cluffy here. So, 
have more fun than you can stand. Let me know what happens. There's going to be a little bit at the, at the, the back end of this, so I'd love you to just spend a little bit more time. I'm so, I know time is so precious, and I'm so grateful that you've spent your time with me. And hopefully it is going to make a difference. All this stuff makes a difference to me. It's like my, my audio journal, isn't it? I write it down, then I speak. And I guess if you think about it, a lot of this, because it's my audio journal, it's problems that I've had, but it's problems I'm solving. And they're, they're problems I've worked with with clients, and they've been resolved. They have exceeded their personal best, and they have great lives after. They just have better lives, because you're never broken. You just need a little tweak, or a little push, or just a draw. Just have those neurological pathways opened up, firing and wiring together to what you and how you want to be. Anyway, there's enough of that. Have more fun than you can stand and enjoy every heartbeat. And I'm going to speak to you real soon. And if you haven't signed up to the hypnosis um, tracks, paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast, please do so. Not if you don't want... Even if you don't want the um, the hypnosis tracks, I will be sending out an email very soon about, I want to give away, give away uh, my Supreme Inner Confidence program and my Free Your Life of Anxiety program. I'm going to give it away to five, maybe 10 people. So, and it's going to be free. That's what called giving away, isn't it, Clever? Yeah, it is. So if you want to be in that mixer, you have to be on that email list, okay? So just sign up, then you're in with a chance, okay? That's if you're interested, but it is supreme inner confidence, and it's inner confidence, and that's what we all want, and it's free your life for anxiety. Lovely programs, great hypnosis in there, specialized, developed for you, and making sure your life gets better. Anyway, until next time, as I said, have more fun than you can stand, and just have a little listen to this too. Just before you go, if you've just got a second or two, please have a listen. Why don't you share this? Share this podcast with just one person today and then one person tomorrow and one person after that. What would happen if we all did that? And why not subscribe? It's so easy to do. Find the platform of your choice. If it's iTunes or it's um, CastBox or any others, there's loads of them. Search for either Paul Clough or Personal Development Unplugged and then there's a big subscribe button. Press that subscribe button and it'll be there. You get the podcast twice a week on a Wednesday and a Saturday. Never have to look any further. And if you would, why not put one of those reviews up? Because that would be awesome because that just moves it around this, this integrated field of learning, as it were, and becomes and gets in front of other people. Which is what we want, isn't it? To be the change we want to see in others and help others change to be the change they want to see in themselves. There you go. I'm going to speak to you real soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. Enjoy every heartbeat. Warning. You are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.